Okay, so it's time for my 2019 house plant tour. So this is what you would see when you walk up to my home, but I wanna show you what's going on in the house and not just the outside. So come on in. Okay, so I have about 25 house plants um, that I love and I want to show them to you. I have some comparison from last year to this year. So here we are. This is my first plant I'm going to show you. It's my Calethium plant. This is a beautiful plant. I love the leaves. I love the color, the variation of leaves. It's almost like a flower without it actually being a flower. This plant here, you want to make sure that you keep it um, in a humid area. It doesn't like to be dried out. So I keep mine um, on a tray of rocks so that way I can kind of put some water in the um, rock areas to keep the area around it um, moist and you know humid okay my next plant here um, is my Sansevieria this is a um, baby uh, snake plant that I received a uh, year or so ago from my mother-in-law. So this is also called a mother-in-law tongue and you'll see that I have a few of these throughout the house and this is a really great plant. I'll tell you some more benefits about it when I get to the one in my room. Okay so this one here is, sorry for the camera, this one here I believe, do not get me wrong, but I think this is a parlor palm and I'm not a hundred percent sure but this has been a struggling plant um, it's gone through different variations where it's grown and died off I bought a smaller one that you can kind of see tucked back there in the back I'm gonna plant that in there to kind of give it some more fullness but even that small plant is struggling and I think it's just because it really needs more light and this is in my room it's just not in a really good location but I don't have any other plants to replace it with so that's where it's going to stay. So this is a, I think, a polar palm, and I stuck in there some golden pothos because I really want it to kind of trail off and just kind of give it a different look. And I just have some artificial light on the tree. Okay. So also in my room is the snake plant, which I was talking to you about earlier. Now this one is quite big. I think this is almost four feet tall. It's pretty big. Um, I do have a leaf or two that are that's kind of leaning off and I'm going to try to propagate those. Oftentimes the, le the leaves will lean like that if it gets too much water or if it's just old. So I think that's what's happened in this case is I might have gotten a little bit happy with the watering schedule and maybe overwatered it just a bit. So I'm going to try to propagate the leaf that's kind of leaning off to the side and I'll have a video on that, you know, especially if it goes well. <laughs> But anyway, uh, snake plants are great for your home. They're easy to grow. They usually like low light. I have mine in, in a south facing window so it doesn't get a whole lot of direct light. Um, but they're really good because they put oxygen in your air. Okay, so this little guy is in one of my back rooms. This is just a mixture of pothos and there's some a philodendron in there. So this one is, a, I think this is a queen marble pothos in there, but I'm not 100% sure. Um, I think it's a queen marble. I, I would bet on it, but I'm not 100% sure. And also in there is a philodendron. A philodendron. I hope I'm saying that the correct way. So this has been doing okay. It's getting a little bit leggy. So at some point, maybe not this year, maybe next year, I'll clip some of the, the longer, leggier leaves and repot that. And then this one here is a neon pothos and a queen marble pothos. Now, the thing about this one, the neon pothos tends to like indirect light whereas the queen pothos likes more direct light. So this is what it looked like in 2018. So it's, it looks good, it looked good last year, but as you can tell, it's really gotten a lot fuller. You can't even see my little angel in there anymore. She's still hiding out in there. So I really am happy with the growth of this plant. But like I was saying, the um, queen, mar the queen pothos, the queen marble is not as marbly as it used to be. And I think it's just because it doesn't get a lot of direct sunlight in the area that I have it but I'm still okay with it it's still beautiful and I'm not going to change the location okay so this here are I have three plants in my bathroom these are small plants and I like them small because they just sit on the back of my commode now this one here if you can kind of see this is a heart shape fern okay a heart shaped fern it likes to be moist um the, the soil likes to be moist not too soggy and this one has actually grown a little bit since I purchased it I like to get plants that are baby plants because I do not like to invest a lot of money in plants because sometimes they last and sometimes they don't. So the heart shape fern here has grown up quite a bit. It was a terrarium plant. 
I believe this one here, I believe it's a watermelon pepperoni. I'm not 100% sure. Again, this was another one that I bought as a terrarium plant that's really grown very well. And then this last little plant over here is a Dusty Miller. Now that one belongs outside. I bought a six pack of plants um, and I had one left over and so I brought it inside. So typically Dusty Millers like direct sunlight and full sunlight for long periods of time. And although this is in the bathroom and there is a window in my bathroom, it's shaded by a tree. So it's not gonna get a lot of direct sunlight. It's probably not gonna get any direct sunlight. So. I don't suspect it's gonna last, but I'll just go find me another cute little plant to put there once it passes away, <laughs> once it doesn't make it. So that are my, those are my three plants that I keep in my bathroom. Okay, so you might be thinking, why do you have a dead plant? This is not a dead plant, this is a eucalyptus um, branch that I love to get from Trader Joe's. I usually get them once a month they stay green for about three weeks two to three weeks and then they die they dry up and the smell still um, permeates throughout the air and I love that about the eucalyptus plant so some people hate the smell some people like it I tend to like it and I especially like it when it dries out I like to put it in my bathroom and I like to put it in my laundry room okay this here of course is my peace lily and I think at this point it's time for me to replant it it was a lot fuller last year um, it has a lot of growth in there, but I just don't think there's a lot of room for them to the roots to grow. So I, with the time this video airs, I would have already replanted this plant um, because I don't want it to die. I got this one about three or four years ago when my grandfather passed away and um, I just want to keep it. So I'm going to cross my fingers and I'm going to repot it. Okay, so this is my ZZ plant, and as you can see where it sits, it sits right across from a window. So it gets a lot of direct, um, a lot of sunlight, and you can tell because the leaves are stretching towards the sun. So I'm going to um, eventually start rotating this to see if I can't get the leaves to kind of stand back up a little bit, but it's doing really, really well. There are some new piece, new leaves in there, some new stems in there, and like I said, this is a great plant. It stays shining like this, um, and it's really doing well. So I love the ZZ plant. If you're looking for a great house plant, that is your that is your guy. Um, this here is a dumb cane, and um, fun fact about a dumb cane, it's it's also called a Diffenbachian. Fun fact about a dumb cane is it got the name because if you used to chew, if you chew on the stem. It used to make your mouth go numb where you couldn't speak for several minutes and that's where it came up with the name dumb cane so that's a really pretty plant and then this one here is just a mixture of plants so there's a golden some golden pothos in there um, some philodendrons some satin pothos in there um, and then I think there is also a spider plant so when I am wanting to divide up plants I kind of pull it from that okay so you guys remember last year I had this ginormous cane plant um, and I didn't know what was wrong with it. I thought it might be dying and I went to some nurseries and they told me that it might be dying. Well, it really wasn't dying. What it was doing was it was producing a baby. <laughs> so my grandma plant made a new plant. Isn't that pretty? And there's some, some more new plants in there along with that one. I stuck a pothos in there, just a small piece and it's actually growing too. So where I thought I was losing my grandma plant, she actually gave me life, some more plants. So I'm super, super thrilled that I didn't give up on her. While there's still some spotting on the leaves, I think it's still an iron issue. It's still giving me a lot of brand new leaf, a lot of growth. So I'm excited. This plant has been with me for probably 13 years. I can't even remember. Um, and I'm very happy. So what I did was I just kind of twisted up the canes and I've used some zip ties to keep it that way. And I'm just gonna make it work. As long as she's willing to stick around, I'm gonna work with her. So I love this plant and I'm glad she's still here with me. I'll leave this thing. Okay, so here are these ugly cap cactuses. <laughs> they still have them. Um, one is called a, um, a golden barrel, the one in the front. This is what it looked like last year. Remember, it was like a round and it had that icky looking situation. Now it's more cone, but it's still called a golden barrel. And I think that one in the back is a prickly pear. Could be wrong, but that's what I think they are. And because it's still living, 
I'm gonna still rock with it but that was I'm still not a cactus lover and uh, yeah <laughs> All right, so my next plant, a new addition, is this angel wing begonia. Angel wing begonia. I think that's the name of it. And if it's not, please let me know in the comment section down below. One of my neighbors gave me this cutting, and it's already starting to grow a new leaf in there. But it's really cool looking. So I do not know what it's going to grow up to be. I don't know what it's supposed to be. I've got a lot of research I need to do on this plant, um, but it's kind of cool looking, right? So when she offered it to me, I said, sure, I'll take it and we'll see what it turns out to be. Hopefully I can keep it alive. The, the leaves are really, really soft though, almost like tissue paper, but they're cool looking. So I kept it. Now this is a sil uh, silver, I'm sorry, satin pothos. Um, I think it's also called a silver spot pothos and then this is a nerve plant that's in there they're in there together they've been there together for a while now the satin pothos has really grown as you can tell I take I've taken cuttings and put them in other plants in the house so I love that plant this is my jade plant and if you remember I had like all kinds of jades a couple of years ago all kinds of succulents this is the only one that really has survived and in I'm um, all while it's not really growing it's not dying so I'm really I'm just gonna let it ride out and see what happens but um yeah I don't really know what to do with the jade but I do like it now this one here is a new plant this is an anthurium and I've been waiting for this to go on sale and it never does <laughs> so Trader Joe's I don't know if you ever heard of Trader Joe's they had this for seven dollars of course it was smaller when I purchased it and it didn't have any babies in there but I brought it because usually I see this plant and it ranges from 16 10 16 70 dollars and i don't like to spend a lot of money on plants like i said before i just don't know if i'm going to be able to keep them alive and i don't want to waste the money so that's my anthurium and i'm so happy with it and then this is my bonsai tree i do not know any details about it i just know that i saved its life <laughs> about four years ago and it's still rocking with me and i'm happy you can see some new leaves in there um i've repotted it I've had to cut back some roots on it but this is like my rehab bonsai and I love it and they all sit right there together just like that at a, at a south facing window so alrighty this here is uh, um, like my fairy garden I went through a phase where I really wanted a fairy garden and so I get little terrarium plants and stick in there until they grow up and then I take them out this plant I don't even know what that is I, it might be a Hoya um, some aloes in there. I do not know what that silver spo that spoony looking plant is. And I think that's a pepperonium in there and a midnight aloe. Not 100% sure, but I love that little piece. And that is my Christmas cactus that did not actually bloom at Christmas this year. It actually bloomed in January. So go figure. Although it's sad looking, it still worked out. And here is another golden marble. I'm not sorry. <laughs> queen marble. Marble queen pothos. Marble queen pothos. Okay, this is called an umbrella tree or Schifleria, and it's one of the most fickle plants I own. Um, wow, I don't want to get rid I tried to actually, I tried to give it to my brother and he wouldn't take it. She's just really fickle. I've moved her around a few times, but this is the spot where she has been sitting and she hasn't given me any problems here. So I'm not going to move her. She hasn't given me any new leaves or any new anything, but she's not dying. So this is her home. <laughs> And then, of course, you, what house tour wouldn't be complete without a pothos on the refrigerator? So here is a golden pothos on my refrigerator. Now, I bought this snake plant because I thought it was a bird's nest variety, meaning it was going to stay small, but it's not staying small. <laughs> this thing is actually getting pretty big, but I like it because the leaves are kind of going different directions, so that's really cool. Okay, y'all, this is my rubber tree. Do you remember the rubber tree? I'm gonna put a picture in. This is what the rubber tree looked like last year. <laughs> I honestly thought it was dead. I put it on the back porch and it was gonna make its way to the garbage. And I forgot about it through the whole rest of the summer, through fall, and then I went out and looked at it and it was growing again. So I moved it to the garage for the winter and this is the plant. And I'm scared to touch it and I'm scared to move it so that's my rubber tree and it's just gonna stay right where it is 
This is my aloe that's usually in my house. It had a lot of pups on it, so I brought it out to kind of repot it, pull off some of the pups. I really don't know what I'm going to do with it. I'm just going to leave it in the garage, and hopefully it'll live, okay? And then my last but not least plant is a... Um, African violet and I have wanted an African violet for a while they I found one it was on sale for two dollars so I purchased it and um, I'm going to move it in the house once I figure out where I want to put it I know that it needs bright bright light um, and I know that you know it could be a little fickle but I've heard it can be easy to grow too so I'm excited about the African violet so anyway that is pretty much my house plate of tour for 2019 Hope it didn't take too much of your time I am going to do a exterior plant tour just because I had somebody ask me what does outside plant stuff like since I have so many for the inside of my home so I was gonna just kind of do a short little tour of what I got going on the outside but until the next time if you have any questions or any comments or any suggestions please leave them down in the um, description in the comment section below and I'll see you in my next video bye